much for hanging in there with us. We had some technical difficulties, so let me just kind of start over. I won't do it all over, but I'm Ann Taylor Pittman. Thank you so much for joining. Um, I'm making some uh, banana leaf wrapped fish today, and the first part of the process is to char some citrus slices in a cast iron pan. It's just, gonna, just going to deepen the flavor, add some kind of smoky notes um, to the fish when it all cooks together. So I just cooked it in a cast iron skillet on high heat. Let me just pop this guy out of the way. And then I have my charred citrus slices. Okay, so I'm gonna use those in just a minute here. So now let me talk about banana leaves. Uh, we bought these at um, a local um, global market. Uh, we, I think we found them at the Asian market. You can also find them at Latin food market. Some big grocery stores will have them. Sometimes you'll see them fresh, and they're usually kind of wrapped up, and they're really long. This is only one piece. If you think about a banana tree, uh, the leaves are really, really long. This is only one piece of a much larger leaf, and it's only half of the leaf. This is the center seam. But we bought these frozen, thawed them out, and now I'm going to cut it to, to size. So we need about a 12-inch square. So I'm going to cut, I guess, about here. It's not really a square. It's close enough. The center rib can be a little bit tough and sometimes hard to, um, to fold up. So I'm just going to kind of pull that guy out. Okay. Now, if you buy a big package of banana leaves and you're wondering, what the heck do I do with the rest of them? Well, if you make tamales ever, which I know is kind of a small <laughs> subset of cooks, they're delicious wrapped in banana leaves. Now, why are we cooking in banana leaves in the first place? Well, one, it keeps your fish moist. Two, it adds incredible flavor. Uh, it doesn't taste like banana. It tastes more kind of herbal, grassy in a really delicious way. Um, so you can use your leftover banana leaves. You can store them in the freezer and use them another time. Or you can keep them out um, uh, and use them for grilling other things. Uh, so we're going to be baking today, but you can use them to wrap foods before you grill. So you can wrap fish before you grill. You can also try this really delicious, um, very simple recipe where you just take a pork shoulder, season it with salt, pepper, maybe a little cumin, wrap it up completely in the banana leaves, and throw that in your slow cooker. You don't need to add any liquid. Just cook the pork shoulder in the slow cooker in the banana leaf, and it's really delicious. Cook it, you know, seven, eight hours until it's tender. Okay, so I mentioned fish. We are going to be cooking fish. You want a firm, uh, firm-fleshed fish that is skinless. We're using sea bass today, sustainable sea bass. You can find that. Uh, you could also use snapper if you'd like, or you could use halibut. And I'm going to brush it with a little oil and then put on some seasoning. So the seasonings I have here are kosher salt, let's see, coriander, cinnamon, uh, cayenne pepper, ginger, and nutmeg. So it's a mixture of some sweet spices and some more kind of expected spices. It's almost like jerk seasoning, but not quite. Jerk seasoning would have all spice in it. This does not have that, but it does give sort of a Caribbean flair to the fish. Okay, so let's see. Let me brush my fish with oil. I'm just using a canola oil. Any sort of neutral flavored oil will work here. And like I said, I'm going to show you how to do this if you don't have access to banana leaves. You'll lose out on the wonderful flavor that the banana leaves give, but you can also reap the benefits of locking in moisture, baking um, in an enclosed sort of packet. Okay, so I'm going to use three orange slices, just sort of overlap them here. And there was a great question earlier about whether you needed the blood, the two types of oranges. You can use just one type. Um, let's see, let me turn this guy over to the presentation side, the, the prettier rounded side up. I'm going to mix together my spices and then sprinkle over the fish. So like I said, the warm spices here, the cinnamon, the nutmeg, so that's going to give it almost like a jerk seasoning sort of flair. And we have a question. Jerk. Great. Um, if you don't have all of those spices, uh, or maybe you don't like cinnamon or you don't like nutmeg, is there something that you would recommend uh, for a substitution? Absolutely. You can uh, leave behind the sort of sweet spices. You can use any spice blend. So I would start with a little bit of kosher salt and then add... You could try cumin. Um, we have coriander in here. 
You could do cumin and coriander, leave out the other spices. You could try even smoked paprika for something with a little bit of um, more overt smoky flavor besides the char that you get off the oranges. So pretty much any spice you like. So this is just a Caribbean version. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the banana leaf over. So I'm putting it on the dull side so that the um, more vibrant side is going to be on the outside. I don't think it really matters. That's just the way I do it. Okay, and fold it over and fold these edges over to make a little packet. It doesn't have to be perfect, and thank goodness, because mine is not. And then the weight of the fish is going to hold it all in place so you don't have to tie it, you don't have to do anything like that. And then you'll just pop this onto a baking sheet and you can do up to four fillets or even more. The recipe is for four fillets, but we're just gonna um, bake this one. And then pop it in the oven at 400 degrees for 20 minutes. So let me get this guy in the oven and then I'm gonna show you the alternate um, method that you can use if you don't have access to banana leaves. Okay, so we're gonna pretend here that we have another fillet. So I'm using parchment paper. So this is a super traditional, um, very classic method, cooking in parchment pa paper and papillote, which I'm probably mispronouncing, but that means in paper, cooking in paper. So I have, I'm starting with a big sheet. This is a pre-cut sheet meant to go over a half sheet pan. I don't know the exact dimensions. It doesn't really matter. Um, but what you wanna do, the classic way to cook in parchment is to make individual packets and you cut it, each one into a heart. Now, I looked up and tried to find the exact reason why you cut it into a heart shape. I think it just makes for an easier to fold packet. I couldn't find an official reason, but we're just gonna go with it, okay? So I folded it in half, cut out a half heart. See, so it opens up like that. Okay, and so imagine that this is your fish. You can use uh, sam. You can cook salmon this way. You can cook chicken this way, and the benefit is again it locks in the moisture. So you put an individual portion on your heart, fold it over, and then starting not at the pointy end but the other end, you would just start making little folds. Fold it down, crease it. Fold it down, crease it. Fold it down and crease it, and go all the way around. It's okay to leave some room around the edges, totally fine. Okay, and then when you get to that tail, you just twist it. And what that does is, similar to the banana leaf, it creates a, a semi-airtight, not completely airtight, packet that's going to lock all the moisture in as you cook. So if you're doing this method, you cook it for the same amount of time. Um, at 400 degrees for 20 minutes. Um, and we have a question. Great. Do you have to do this in the oven? Could you do it on, say, a grill or on the stovetop? That is a great question. I'm, I'm not sure how to convert it to stovetop, but you could definitely do this on the grill. I would keep the grill heat a little below medium high. Um, so if you have a thermometer, try to go around 400 degrees, which is what, um, what our oven is set to. So that's going to be not a super hot flame but a medium hot flame, and this would be delicious on the grill. Because through the banana leaf, the fish will pick up some of the smoke and, uh, and the natural flavors from grilling, from the, from the coals or the um, briquettes if you're using a gas grill. Um, we have one more question, sorry. Uh, Betty wants to know, does anyone, do you eat the banana leaf? Oh, that's a great question. You don't eat the banana leaf. Um, it does impart flavor, but it's so fibrous and tough, and it's not very enjoyable to eat the actual leaf. That's a great question. Um, let me show you what it looks like when it's cooked. So I have my nice plate here. Okay. So here's a portion that I've cooked. So when we arranged it in, in the packet, we put the oranges down, put the fish on top, wrapped it up, and flipped it over. So the orange slices are on top now. And so as it cooks, the oranges release their moisture down into the fish to flavor it. But then we're going to flip it back over. And so if you're having a dinner party, it's really fun to give everybody their own individual packet to open up at the table. 
it's a really makes for a really great um, presentation. Really kind of fun because it it feels interactive. Okay, so let's open this guy up, and then you can just eat it off of the banana leaf. Whoa, look at that! It is so juicy. I mean, there is like juice everywhere. The fish is really mild, so like I said, we we're working with a sea bass here. Um, it is incredibly moist. It's perfectly cooked. It's just starting to flake here, which tells me that it's really nicely done. I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of cilantro over the top. You don't have to, but that's just a little extra flair. I love cilantro. I know it's divisive. Um, and that's it. So that is Caribbean spiced fish wrapped in banana leaves. Oh my gosh, it's so buttery. I haven't even tasted it, but I can tell. So thank you so much for joining me today. Please come back next week. Next Monday I'm going to show you a really fun and very easy idea for Easter. Thanks so much. Thanks for sticking with us through the technical difficulties. See you next week.